Welcome to the lecture series on neural dynamics. In this video, we look at the density of membrane potentials and derive the continuity equation, also called the transport equation. So here we have our population of neurons, and this population of neurons has a distribution of membrane potentials. Each membrane potential will evolve as a function of time and at some point it will hit the threshold, there's a spike, afterwards there's a reset, and the whole process starts again. We have not just one neuron, but we have a population, so there are many membrane potentials. For each of these neurons, the membrane potential follows a differential equation, it changes, there's a decay term going back to rest, set here to zero, and then there are spike arrivals excitatory positive potentials and inhibitory, which means uh, negative postsynaptic potential. There might also be an external input, which is the same for all neurons. And now the question is, instead of looking at each neuron individually, can we describe the distribution of membrane potentials called the membrane potential density? To make things simple for this lecture and many of the following ones, I will look only as, as a single type of input, so only at excitatory inputs, uh, and in the end we will again combine excitation and inhibitory spike arrivals. So if you just have excitatory spike arrivals, then we can say I have a change of the membrane potential, there's a decay term towards rest, then QE is the charge of the excitatory spikes, uh, C is the capacity of the membrane, and this is the external input current. And now I would like to derive this density of potentials. So here's the figure again, as a function of time, different membrane potentials. And uh, now let's look at one specific moment in time. For example, I take this moment here and say this is my time t. And then I can ask, let's add a couple more of these membrane potentials. So there are membrane potentials and there are other membrane potentials. They all go up to the threshold. I look at these membrane potentials at time t and uh, now I can ask at this time t what is the number of membrane potentials between a value u0 and a slightly higher value u0 plus delta u? So the distance between these arbitrary reference potentials is delta u. And so let's write this down. Now I say I look at the number of membrane potential trajectories, trajectories of neurons I, different neurons I, with the property that the UI lies between U0, my reference potential, and U0 plus delta U. So this is the quantity I'm interested in. I would like to transform this into a density and uh, I think of a large population of neurons. I'm interested in the fraction of neurons. So I divide by the total number big N of neurons, capital N. And then um, I ask what fraction of neurons in that large population has a membrane potential between U0, the lower reference, and U0 plus delta U, which is the upper reference. And I think of this quantity in the limit that n is really large. And then this quantity here, this is my, this is an integral over a density p of u prime at time t, always the same time, d of u prime from u0 to u0 plus delta u. And now I would like to understand how this quantity, this number of trajectories in that 
uh, in that limit between u0 and u0 plus delta u changes from one time step to the next. So this is now another time, which is t plus delta t. So let's call this quantity here my n of u0, u0 plus delta u at time t. That's just a shorthand description. And now I ask, how does this little symbol n, the fraction of neurons in that interval at time t, change? So let me compare n of u0, u0 plus delta u at time t plus delta t with n of u0, u0 plus delta u, same interval, but at time t. And now here comes an interesting concept, and that's the following. We see that there are, so I look at this interval here between u0, and now I see during that time delta t, there are actually trajectories entering, and that will, these trajectories will increase this number. So I will say it's a flux into this little segment, and the flux goes through the lower bound, u0, and then some trajectories will leave this little box, and I have to count them negatively. I have to subtract these, u0, u0 um, plus delta u, the upper bound at time t. And now this number of trajectories will, of course, depend on how long is my interval delta t. So I multiply here with delta t. So to be a bit more precise, n times j of u0 times delta t is the number of trajectories that pass from below from below through u0. Okay, and now we see something here. There's a delta t. I have a delta t here. So if I divide by delta t, so let's multiply both sides by 1 over delta t, then I will get a, I will cut this out. I have a delta t here. I have a delta t there. My choice, delta t, was arbitrary. So I can take the limit of delta t to 0. And then this is just the derivative dn dt, where n is this quantity u0 u0 plus delta u at time t. And on the right hand side, I will have a derivative, there's a minus sign, so the, the bigger term is here with a minus sign, so it's minus d du j of u0 and t times delta u. So this delta t has been cancelled by this delta t. And what I did here is an expansion of 
of this second term around u0. So you'll so this term here will give a j of u0 plus the derivative, and the derivative comes with a negative sign. So now I have a delta u here explicit, but here the delta u is still inside. I will now use this definition here. And this definition uh, tells me that this fraction or little number n can be written as an integral. So let's write to, let's try to do this. So the little n is p of u prime t du prime from u0 to u0 plus delta u. And then I still have to use this ddt. I take the derivative, the integral is linear, therefore I can shift the derivative inside. I have a ddt p of u prime t d u prime. Now this term here, if the delta u that we consider is really small, then this gives just a multiplication of this with delta u. So the integral can be just written as a sum, a single term, ddt, uh, ddt p times delta u, and this will cancel this delta u here. So let me write it out, ddt p of u t times delta u, and here I have my derivative, j of u t times delta u. Now this derivative is taken at u0, on the right hand side is also taken at u0, and now you see that I can cut out the delta u on both sides, and what remains is what's called the continuity equation. So here we have this continuity equation, the derivative with respect to time of the membrane potential density is connected to the flux, the probability current, through a reference value u, and again here we have a derivative with respect to u, I write this here as normal derivatives. You can also write it as partial derivatives, d dt and d du. This continuity equation is also called the transport equation. Um, it reflects that the number of particles, neurons here, does not change over time. These trajectories are continuous, not necessarily smooth. They may contain jumps, but jumps are also trajectories that are just changing on a very, very short time scale. And uh, in the essence, this equation expresses that a change in the membrane potential density is only due to the fact that membrane potentials move in or out. So the only way that the number of particles or trajectories at location near U0 changes is if trajectories move in or out. In other words, Trajectories do not disappear, do not reappear, and then we have this continuity equation, which expresses the transport occurrence across a reference u that appears on both sides. It's, it's an equation which will play a role for neural networks, but in fact, it's a basic equation of physics. Now, <coughs> The, there's a law attached to it, it's really a density, which means for my neurons, if I integrate from minus infinity up to threshold, I've integrated fire neurons, the membrane potential cannot be higher than threshold, then this must always be equal to one. <coughs>